last time on Critnet. Most of the group delved into the Reinhardt base of operations in Mist and Sweat, while Humbal struck out to investigate some of the abandoned buildings further into the city. Humbal discovered a handful of useful trinkets while snooping around, and laid a few specters to a more restful afterlife. The others delved into the history of the Reinhardt's research there in Mist and Sweat, and uncovered the dark reasons behind them designing the baubles that turned out to hold the sole energy of the individual they attached to in order to use them like a Magitek drive at the expense of the soul they held. Gaskar also had a few revelations. His physical situation seemed to be that of the Reinhardt's doing, and by extension, of their research into an entity known as a Divinely. It would seem Gaskar is more complicated than even he himself knows. Let's get into the world. By the way, I am now like, you know, put, connecting a lot of dots, obviously, about the dream that I had and this place and uh-huh. Sound of Rushing Water. But the dream had a bunch of trees. Correct. Have we haven't seen any trees? Nope. So uh, I have had a dream that eerily reminds me of this place and more ways than I would really care to go into detail about at the moment. And it is very safe to say that I have been here before, I believe, although I do not have the best recollections of it. But there is something strange that is missing, and that is trees, and also a waterfall. If on our journey, if we see either... Either on our way back or on a future journey through here, I would like to take a closer look. I, I don't have a concrete idea exactly, but Cruz is kind of going out on a hypothesis, and he's more than worried about. Let's just say he's looking at worst case scenario, and he. So, and I'm I'm stressed out and I'm worried that I'm really worried that they're harvesting souls of the people of Hopal and the Hopal's a city. People go missing every day. Homeless go missing every day. I wonder what the range on those bubbles are. <clears throat> and the Reinhardts have their fingers in everything. Military the cat the capital shops everything if it has if it goes in and out of the ride metal district they have their fingers in it so so gaskar you can't go to the ride metal district <laughs> because oh, I've, i know that i i don't know if i'm leaving the guild hall for a while if those This is what I'm scared of is because there could be members around walking around the guild hall that are part of the Reinhardt family or Reinhardt employee employment. And what happens if they have those baubles hanging under their coats? Mm hmm. Oh, yeah. No, no, buddy, buddy. I need you to listen to me right now. I am not leaving the guild hall. For the foreseeable future, I'm going to get real close with our buddy Relic. Worst case scenario, I need to take all the paperwork in the journal to the Emperor. I don't know if I'm comfortable with that yet. Like I said, worst case scenario. Mm-hmm. It's going to be have to be pretty darn bad, and you need to give me some time. Because... I know he's your good friend, and that's all wonderful and good. 
if there's anything that you you should have just learned is people who are close to you can have a dual life. Look at Greems. The very big problem is, is he could be involved in this as well. Egg, exactly. I don't like the way you're smiling there, DM. <laughs> oh, no. I'm just observing. I'm recovering from a major blow to my plot, but no, it's <laughs> fine. <laughs> yeah, Cruz's, Cruz's mind is going everywhere, and he just thinks back of, they found a god down here. And... In, in one of those baubles, were they going to collect and harvest? There's another one on the fourth floor. Mm-hmm. Was the Reinhardt... Could the Reinhardts be the reason that there's no magic on the surface? Did they, did they discover this technology before the collapse? Hmm. That's an interesting Ooh. question. That is an interesting question. Well, I think time will tell on this one. But for now, I think it would be best for all of us to keep the information that we've learned be a secret here. All that needs to be known by my name is especially is that we came down here and we couldn't find a darn bobble. Found lots of specters. Couldn't really deal with them. Couldn't get a bobble. How far away are we from the elevator at this point? Um, By this point, you guys are about 11 hours. On on the boat? I thought it I'm, cut the I'm time down. Kidding. I was I'm like, wait, kidding. what? <laughs> no. Uh, I mean, you guys still got maybe like two, three hours left of floating along. It, the current is carrying you pretty vigorously, so it, it's a pretty well straight shot back to where you know the elevator will be. Is it a covered boat, like, big enough to have, like, a captain's clothes? It's kind of like a canoe. It's like a canoe. Oh. It, it's kind of like a like a canoe front and back, but kind of like a barge in the middle. So it's, it's mostly a flat. Gaskar separates himself as much as you can in a boat like this and I think goes and sits okay. on the f- the bow of the boat as much as he can like it's far forward and yeah. internally crudely begins to pray okay Valia I think I have a connection with you that is even different than the one I made earlier I do not know what all this means for me. If you can hear me in any way, shape, or form, please know that I am now looking for guidance I don't think anybody else can give. And I just sit there, silence, looking out over the water. As you are saying these words just in a in a glance down at the water you would expect to see your reflection but it is not your reflection even in the broken kind of moving water you can see that there's there's a dark shape where your reflection would be but within the dark shape, there's this this hint of light, just this this little pinprick. And it's kind of getting broken up a little bit as the waters kind of flow around it. But the pinprick just kind of grows lighter and lighter, and it's it's about the size of a marble. And then you see it just kind of disappear, just just for the briefest of moments. And then you see, in the water, the dark figure shape of your shadow. You see kind of where your head would be kind of move up, revealing a skeletal head. 
looking up at you. You see kind of your, your reflection kind of extend a little bit into what would be a dark cloaked figure. And you see the little marble, just the little hint kind of in where the hand would be kind of held up against its chest. And in looking down at it, looking back up, still seeming to be your reflection in the water, you see it hold it, kind of grasp it in its bony metallic fingers, turn away from you. And even as it kind of fades into the murkiness of the water, you hear footsteps against the bottom of the boat. And then you feel something kind of on your left hand, Gascar, just on the edge of the boat. I subtly look. It's a piece of paper. I take it. As subtly as I can. Mm -hmm. I am intentionally being sneaky here. Okay. Uh, Do I need to roll a check? Roll a sleight of hand check. Well, that's a 10. It really subtly. Oh, really? A, a couple of you guys kind of hear uh, the sound of paper coming from Gascar's direction, but you guys have picked up a lot of pieces. Probably nothing. And you have your piece of paper kind of tucked with you, Gascar. Yeah. Kind of fiddle around with it in my paws for a moment, not trying to make a tremendous big deal about it. You know, I think I continue to stare out at the water for a long while before opening and looking at it. I eventually take a closer look. It's peaceful, the water and the area around you. And in looking up and looking into the wall, or like looking at the paper, you find it to be a barred uh, piece of sheet music. You see words that you don't recognize. Just kind of layered through it almost like uh, lyrics kind of set below the tone of whatever music this is but you don't recognize any of the actual like vocals or names and the paper itself for seemingly where it came from is completely dry I am puzzled by that but I have seen stranger things today I am definitely noting that I've had an encounter with What I believe to be the Silver Jade for certain this time, based off of the description I had. But this is all information that I am presently holding to myself in present company. Well, then the rest of the boat ride goes by uneventful. You would arrive several hours later to the... uh, uh, Parker, were you going to do something? No, I was just only going to mention that I was going to, while we're on the boat, play a... Like a melancholy, but not super sad, like piece on my violin, just kind of like to cut the silence. Okay. After you play perhaps through a tune or something, maybe you get to a natural lull in the music. I I have a favor to ask of you. Would you be able to maybe play this song? And I hand him the paper. Um, I take the paper and I I look at it. It's old. It's strange, actually. And seeing kind of the way the form of the entire piece goes, this is uh, very reminiscent of very old classical pieces. Uh, Like pre-snap pieces. Like this is, this is very old. Uh, You've studied this quite a bit. Uh, Very strange. Strange thing to just be handed for a piece of sheet music. Uh, the lyrics you also can't read. They seem almost not even like language, but nonetheless, it's it's a piece. At this point, I'm not even asking where you got this, but um, yes, oh, I will. I will play this, and I will. I will do my best to okay. read, interpret, and and play play this music. Roll a performance check. Ooh, that is a natural 20. Oh, yeah. Plus eight. 
<laughs> so 28 oh, for performance. Yes. <laughs> if there was any of the roles I was expecting, like, the like have divine justice on where we do not roll well, it was going to be this particular role. Every one of you have been rolling nothing but fantastic this entire night. This is insane. Okay, I I take umbrage with that. I have not had fantastic rolls. Everybody else has. <laughs> if anything, this makes up for the nat one I rolled earlier. So <laughs> that is also true. This is fair. I wish I could tell you guys exactly how many natural ones I've rolled over the last two weeks because it's been de- incredibly, incredibly depressing. Uh, I believe it. All right. Well, Parker, you start to play the piece. And it's it's mysterious, kind of melancholy, but uh, uppity suddenly. And then kind of like someone is almost looking out and in exploration. Like you're, you're looking and then you see something. And then it kind of slows back down and it kind of speeds up. And as you're playing through the piece, your eyes reading through it perfectly. There were a thing or two you learned at your bard in college that you actually managed to do right. And this was one of them. This is where all that tuition money came in handy. And you play this piece perfectly. Humval, as he is playing the piece, you just hear this music begin to echo out. You aren't necessarily one for fine music. The Sandlands don't really have much in that way. And probably haven't been exposed to a heck of a lot of it. But this tune is familiar to you. You know the lyrics to it. You recognize, just from somewhere, you recognize this this tune. There's words that go along with it. Where have you seen that? Where have I heard that? Make a history check. Here comes my important biff for the night. <laughs> Five. Five. Vaguely familiar. You'd have to look into it more in order to recognize it. But at best I can do right now is I can keep rhythm by tapping mm-hmm. on my leg. And kind of mouthing the words. Don't really know the words, but... Mm-hmm. Like, is that it's yeah. the mumble singing people do when they forget a lyric in a bit of a song? Like, they know the popular part, but anything other than that, they're like, well, yeah. Exactly. That's exactly what it is. Umval, can you look at that sheet music while he is playing? Because there are lyrics there. I don't know them. I don't know how to read them. I bet. It's gibberish to me, and but I cannot believe I. There's been a lot of strange things that have happened today. Very, 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 very strange things that have happened. And you being able to hum these lyrics is right up there. So, Gaska. Yes, mm-hmm. My first name is Hum. I home a lot. Okay. And I, I, and I give him a wink. Okay. I, I just rub my temple. And... <laughs> <laughs> you need to calm down. I am, I am doing the best that I can under any circumstances that I am not even fully sure I comprehend at the moment. So I am trying to stay calm. This is me calm. This is calm. So do you take a look? I will take a look, at least to put my crazed companion with a gun at (laughs) ease. Okay. Uh, As kind of Parker has it clasped to kind of the the tip of his his violin, as most professional musicians do, and he's playing through it. I'll I'll lean Uh, over, like, and lean like that one, that overextended hand reach, like, uh, on top of Parker's head, and then lean over that. To, like get a good look at it. Okay. Good thing he rolled that nap uh, on that performance. Parker, you are, <laughs> yeah, you are absolutely, you haven't missed a single note this entire time. A little more difficult, but man, 
you got this. Uh, My tuition went somewhere. Exactly. <laughs> and as you're, you're, you keep playing, getting more and more into it, you begin to see the strings of your violin begin to alight. Once on a long note, suddenly one begins to alight. Again, you go to a high note, and that comes alive too. And as you kind of go one after the other after the other, soon all of your strings are reverberating uh, beams of light. Humval, peeking over, you not only see the glowing light, but you see the sheet music. Hey, those are the uh, those are the symbols in your book. Why are they on a piece of sheet music? I don't know what they mean. So I'm going to turn to Gascar and, be, and just tell him how it is. I have no idea what these are. Well, how do you know the... How do you know the tune? And... Teemingly, at least some of the lyrics. You don't want to say, fine, I, I get it. Please just do not make the sassy remark at the moment. I'm... Gaskar, I probably heard the tune a long time ago. There is not a lot of music in the Southern Sandlands. There's not a lot of joy, so I probably heard it somewhere and it's stuck. But it was probably a long, long time ago. Okay. Guys, I was handed this by the Silver Shade. Just now. While sitting on the bow of the boat. Alright, at that point I stopped playing. <laughs> That's awfully nice of you to tell us now, way far later, after we have started to play the strange sheet music provided by the ghost that is most certainly going to attempt to kill us. Thank you very much. Uh, and it's interesting, Parker, as you stop playing, the, the light beams of your strings kind of pluck off one after the other after the other. And they, they kind of swirl forward just a little bit in front of the tip of your violin, as if trying to almost find something before kind of slowing, fading, and then vanishing. Seeming to have not been able to find purchase on whatever it was looking for. Yes, Cap? Yes, Parker. Next time, warn me before you give me <laughs> mystery sheet music. <laughs> uh, fair enough. Fair enough. I wasn't going to bring it up, and then you started playing music, and I thought, hmm, I, I wonder. Hey, Parker, maybe you should play it. Think about everything we've heard about the Silver Shade. It's never attacked anyone. It's only been seen in the distance. Nobody knows what it wants. And now it gives <clears throat> sheet music to Gaskar. That whom fall Honor from the Southern Sandlands seems to have a familiarity with, whether that is coincidental or not. Regardless, I'm, I'm just saying at this point, is the Silver Shade something we have to fear? He is very freaky looking. Trust me, I, I just had a very close up look at him. He is very freaky looking, but I did not get any sense of malintent from him. In fact, he seemed to be maybe even a vessel of valley as well. Yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to overstate what he could be. I'm just saying we don't have any proof of malintent from him. All I'm gonna say is two things. I was praying to Valia. Take that for what you will. That was a first. Other than a conversation with her, does that count as prayer? Regardless, I was just praying, and I asked for guidance. Oh, and wait, back up. Mm -hmm. you, wait, you were having a conversation? I I was not having a conversation with him, but I, I was praying to Valia and asked her for gui guidance. And the next thing I know, my shadow transforms into him. So, 
High Priest Gaska of nah, nah, Church nah, nah. Valia. No, no, no. I no, 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 no. Yo, no, no. Yes, you are, because you are receiving divine guidance. No, and I cannot. You have, no. you have received a brilliant gift from a individual who is more than likely evil and undead. And using a moment of your own weakness to prey upon you. It is a very simple solution. Could be. But really strange things have happened today. And I'm not willing to roll much out right now. So, if anything, I'm looking to go ahead and collect some puzzle pieces and start making sense of what I thought was a clear picture before that is clearly not. Uh, I'm just saying, what's the worst that can happen? The silver shade pops up and we have to fight him? That does seem like a bad idea, considering that he was able to transform and manifest himself out of my shadow. Yes, but he would have done it already. Or he's waiting for a good time to manifest himself as Gaskar and kill us all. What time is he going to wait for the beat to drop? Hold on, one of the, I would like to look through the sheet music. Is there a drop? Uh, yes, there is actually a drop. There is right there, right on the baseline. <laughs> Chris, you might be onto something. Screw it. And I will continue to play. And as you just start reefing through it, you start playing through it. You will continue to play? Yes. Uh, hold on. How close are we to the uh, to the elevator at this point? At this point, I'll say you guys are a handful of minutes from it. Uh, so we're close to the elevator. If you want, you can wait to play it until we're at the elevator. And then right when, if he shows up, we can jump in the elevator and leave. Can I see the elevator from here? Is the mist too thick? It's too thick. I, for one, say play it. I do not think that he means us ill will. I could be very wrong, but I do not think so. To be fair, Gaskar, you are a remarkable creature of determining uh, the character of others. I Almost like glazed eyes, I just like, yep, Humval said words. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he did. All right, Humval. Cruz says wait. Gaskar says now. You are the tiebreaker. I will wait for you at the elevator. Then we wait. Well, after a short boat ride, you guys manage to disembark from the boat, which just continues on, kind of a well shoot kind of thing. But you guys manage to get back to the elevator after a short trek, and upon standing in the f- in front of it now, do you play or do you wait to get in the elevator? Um, I'll wait until we can like hunker down and like actually like prepare. Uh, I'm gonna okay. I'm gonna stick my key in the elevator to open the doors. Okay, yeah, they open. Uh, I'm gonna pull my sword and shield out, and I'm gonna say, "All right, it's the do or die moment. You can play it, or we can uh, we can go." Swiss wrist. It does so. Protector mode. Ooh. Changes accordingly. Yep. To flamethrower. And turns around and fires. <laughs> Thought you programmed that thing better than that. <laughs> you are safe and warm. <laughs> <laughs> All of a sudden, <laughs> Humval's hair poofs out because he got dried too quickly. All right, Humval, are you ready? I mean, I'm ready as ever for anything. And I begin playing, but even louder and harder. You begin to play... Once again, vigorously, you increasing the volume of your your piece and going through it, your eyes never skipping over a single note. Once again, string by string by string, they all light up. But this time, as you are finishing the piece, coming to the very end of the music, the beat drops as you were in a violin piece. Lindsay Sterling style. There you go. See? <laughs> Proud of that right there. Uh, and the three pieces of your string from light, once again, kind of pops off of each one of your strings. But this time, as they're kind of inch warming through the, the air, you see them begin to make their way towards the elevator, kind of tapping up against the ceiling. 
this time lasting a little bit longer having finished the piece before once again fade and vanish. Well, nothing happened. What do you say we get in the elevator and go? I, for one, am totally okay with that. We're good. We're leaving. All right, then. That is. I'm going to... Sh- I'm going to sheathe my sword and step into the elevator. I was going to say we should make a stop on level one to drop off one of those crystal things, but right now I don't care. I'd prefer to go, but if y'all want to do that so we can check that box off, those we can, let's just make it quick. You said those those things were, they entered the elevator and hit the ceiling as if they wanted to go Yes. Up. As if they wanted to go up. Okay. I just wanted to make a mental note of that. Okay. Uh, eas- easily enough done as well. If you guys wanted to make your way up to the first level, quickly hop out, Humval. You can run a bajillion miles an hour in any particular direction. And with your ability to hide the first one, you, in a random pieces and bits of rubble, cracks in the wall ceiling. That's it. You can vary. two grappling hooks and two 50 feet uh, ropes. And I have a fantastic athletics combined with speed, so I can go wherever I want, as long as I have nearby structures. Long story short, you hide the crystal on the first floor fairly easily. That's not a difficult place to make something small like that high. Natural 16. Very good. Uh, DC is set. 23. Good. So you finally reach back to the surface. The doors swing open. And for once in a very long time, you are breathing air that is not thick with moisture. Cruz is gonna Cruz is gonna walk straight back to the guild hall. Okay. I mean, your your guild? Yeah, our, yes, our guild. Hmm. <clears throat> he's uh he's gonna open the door and walk in and he's going to look around for Relic. He doesn't seem to be around. Uh, As we exit the elevator, I'm going to look at Gaskar and Gaskar, can I keep this sheet music? Can I, can I have this? Yeah. Yep. You can, you can totally have that. I, I don't, I wouldn't know what to do with it. And I don't recognize the symbols on it. So, go for it. Uh, Do we want to go deal with my name is now? Or do we need to chill out first as a group? I say we chill out first and deal with the problems from this later. Okay. I'm game. I'm going to go take a very, very long nap. And I go find a room, which will become my permanent room. DM, do I have a room number for that? Six. All right. Then you all can either split off into your your rooms. I'm, or I'm still looking for Relic. You find his door uh, unlocked, and he is not inside of it. I'm going to exit the guild out to the guild hall and I'm going to go look for my name is. Okay. She's at her station. It's about two in the afternoon. I'm just going to approach her and be like, uh, my, have you, have you seen relic at all? Yes. He left on a, uh, important errand. Wouldn't tell me exactly where he's been gone for most of the day. Left very early. Okay, well, we're back from our mission, but I gotta, I gotta talk over some things with the guys before we come and finish up. Relic should be back within a couple hours in order to review and finalize your contract. Well, Make sure you do that quickly once he gets back. Well, I guess we're gonna all take a nap, so let him know to to either wake me or. I'd say Parker up before uh, before anybody else. All right, I'll pass along the message, but 
make sure things are in order. We need those as fast as possible. Our uh, customer is getting very antsy. I don't want to disappoint, but... Of course, none of us do. So quickly, get it ready. <clears throat> I'm going to go nap. I'll let Relic know when we're that we're here. Yes, yes, I, I will, I assure you. I'm gonna, and then I'm going to head back into the uh, into our guild, and I'm going to go back to my room, room 12, and I'm going to hang up my armor and my short. I'm going to wipe down my sword and scabbard, get it all cleaned up before bed. I'm going to make sure all the silvering is gone because I, okay. I don't know what that's going to do to the metal of my blade, but I don't want to... It's th- just magnetic. It won't hurt it. And, uh, but yeah, I'm going to I'm gonna get everything all dried and cleaned up, make sure nothing rusts, get it all treated and everything, and then I'm going to go to bed until Relic gets back. Boom is going to walk with purpose towards this room, get inside, close the door, bar it, lock it, and then go straight to his bedside and pull out his sheet of papers and recall the symbols from memory on that sheet music. In pulling it out, you do see some of the pages as they normally do kind of almost slip out of your hands, no matter how tightly you hold it, and then kind of slip back in. Flum- Thumbing through them, you do see several of the symbols on that piece of sheet music within your various pages, just kind of scrawled over some of them in top right, some of them big, some of them small, just you recognize pieces and bits. It's interesting. On some of them, they're almost in a cadence, which is why you're able to kind of identify that tune because it was the way you read it over and over and over again. It just fits so perfectly. And while I'm at it, I'm going to take that ledger I took with me and see what I can find out from that now that I'm on the surface. Not really a heck of a lot. I mean, it's full of the various goings-on and guards. You have the entire list of guards' names. All the civilians, all of the people. Babadatch is even on there. So, um, you got you got everybody's name. I don't think I would ever ask the old man back in the caravan what his name was. Yes. Mm. You had his name, but it was not... It is not on that ledger. Okay. That was a far-reaching thing I wanted to double-check. Yeah. No, it, it was not on that ledger. All right, then. If anything else, I can turn the le- the ledger into the guild and see if they can do something with it. Mm-hmm. That would probably be helpful. Other than that, I'm going to make personal notes of each symbol and be like, on sheet music provided by Silver Shade and tuck it into my notes. And then I'm okay. going to start drawing them over and over. Parker, last but not least. I'm going to go back to like the main meeting area of the Guild of No One. Okay. I'm going to, not to like intentionally be loud, but still continue to start over at the part where I left off the second time down in the, the fracture of the music and play it. Um, softly just enough for those uh, whatever like things of light to appear it takes about four or five lines for them to finally appear kind of one for every string and again one two three four they kind of pop 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 they they almost like hang off and they, they give a certain clarity to the tune of the music as you're playing it, it kind of like a, a minor enhancement uh, and it only is when you stop do they finally detach. But this time, as they do... I was just going to say, hearing the music, Cruz uh, pulls out Green's journal and starts reading it. As you see the, the kind of small string-like uh, beams of light just kind of pop off of the strings... This time, they begin to make their way very quickly, kind of wiggling through the air towards Hoomval's room. And as they kind of tap on the door, you see them beginning to kind of make their way down, and then you see one of them slip underneath the door. 
and then another and the other and the other. Umval, as you're frantically scribbling notes, a small amount of light begins to show over your shoulder. What kind of light? Four small stringlets of light just kind of swimming through the air kind of towards you. I pull out my my magic hand axe and I cut them down. Okay. Uh, Swinging at them, easy enough. One, two, three, four. They are broken up. I want to say at that point you'd hear a knock at your door. In which I gather up my notes and I tuck them away. And come back and unlock it, open it up and what do you want, Paka? Did you happen to see strings of light come into your room? Yes. Where did they go? I was busy writing something at the time. So I can't quite tell you. Interesting. I did I did notice them though. Uh do you do you mind? As I like, place my bow back onto the strings of my violin. Actually, you have reminded me of something, Parker. I will actually be back shortly. I have an errand to go run. You will have to wait, for my errand is particularly important. Okay, well, Humval, where are you going? Are you doing your errand? I'm going to the post office. Question. For Humval, actually. Do you kick me out of your room before you leave? Yes. Parker, you are kicked out. Humval, you lock your door. Yep. And I'd imagine them make quite a little show of it. And you rush off to go to the post office. Yep, like top speed. Boom, gone. Humval leaves. Does anyone do anything? <clears throat> Upon uh, finishing Green's journal at this point, you can't believe how such a great man had fallen down, for the lack of a better word, a road that would that took him to such an evil place. Cruz throws back on his pants and he folds his wings around his upper toe or so. He just grabs his sword and he's leaving. He's going to his shop. <laughs> okay. But before he can leave, he... He knocks on Gaskar's door and he just says, Gaskar, I need the bag of holding. I'm passed out and that door's locked. I'm failing on that. He He's going to his shop. He, he has to get his shop. So he grabs his keys and goes. Before you leave, sir. Crows. Parker. How are you with locks? <laughs> um... <laughs> I mean, I'm not the best. If you have something thin and pointy, I can destroy the tumblers. No, I don't. I don't need it destroyed. Um, long story short, I need in Humball's room. I'm. I'm. Not, I'm not going to ask. I'm just going to. I'm going to go back into my room and I'm going to find two harder pieces of wire or something that I can use as a lockpick and I. I come back out and I'm like, all right, let me let me have a go at this. I don't I don't even want to know. And in fact, if he asked me about this, I didn't do it. Fair enough. Cruz, what is your sleight of hand? I, I mean, I have a plus one on that. What's your dexterity score? Twelve. That is why he has a plus one. Yeah. No. Yeah. I know. I was making sure of that. So you're going to be making this check at disadvantage. <laughs> God damn Because you are not a trained locksmith. You are not using lock picking tools and you have no idea what you're doing. You're shoving a piece <sighs> of wire in a lock. <laughs> so I have to take the lowest one, right? Yes, you do. Five. Five. Uh, you're sticking the piece of wire in there and then you feel it get stuck. Try- trying to pull it out and it's stuck. That's inconvenient. Parker, have a go. <laughs> Y'all wish Kaskar wasn't asleep. <laughs> At least get the wire out. Uh, you, you'd think he'd like to, but if it's stuck, that means it's jammed. Cruz is going to stand up and say, well, I'm not good at this. Go wake up, Gaskar. <laughs> I have to go. <laughs> well, 
I'm sorry, Parker. You got the least helpful <laughs> amount of help you've ever gotten. <laughs> Stupid five. <laughs> Wow. Cruz is going to leave. I'm sorry, Parker. Okay. I got to go. <laughs> no. All right. Fine. And Cruz is going to leave. He's going to jet past my name is and out the front doors. Once he gets out the doors, it's only two o'clock in the afternoon, right? Right. Once he gets out the doors, though, he's going to lay. He's just going to go into a dead sprint all the way to his shop. Okay. Uh, Parker, what are you doing with the piece of wire that's stuck in the lock now that you've been left with it? Uh, okay, so I see myself having two options. Uh, okay. get the wire out or, or continue to jam more wire into this lock in, in hopes that it unlocks. <laughs> okay. I will, I will make an attempt to maybe hopefully unlock this lock f- first. I guess. Okay. What is your sleight of hand, and are you trained in it? Plus four, and I have half proficiency because I'm jack of all trades. Perfect. Then you're not missing it. You're not making it a disadvantage, and you're just roll a straight roll. DC's a little higher because there's a piece of wire stuck in it. Does he have a lock picking kit? Right. Do you have one? I, for some reason, have a, a tinkerer set. That is not a locksmithing kit or lockpicking kit. Then hold on. Which I have a kit. But what? Uh, hold on. I'm going to go up to the front. Hey, my cat, do you have potentially a, a lockpicking kit or anything nearby? She looks at you very strangely. No, Why? I might have locked myself out of my room. It is okay. I think uh, Relic has a spare key. Uh, well, I have a spare key if you'd so like. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Just go ahead and hand it over. What room are you in? I will give her the number to Humval's room. Which is... Um, that's a good question, Sawyer. <laughs> I mean, I was just standing at it. I should know. It's number. Yeah, no, you were there. That's fine. I'll, 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 I'll give you, you that one. Just because me. I just wanted to torture the player. <laughs> but uh, please roll a deception check. Oof. Nat 19 plus 6, 25. Ooh. What was your contested check? Nat 16 plus 8 for insight. Doors. 24. <laughs> <laughs> well, I suppose that you try not to lose this one. We don't have a lot of them. And she'll hand you the key. And I will take the key and I'll head back to the door. And then I'll stare at this wire sticking out of the lock that I can't use the key on. And I guess my next thing is to try to get this wire unjammed from the, the keyhole. Hey, roll sleight of hand or stealth. Or excuse me, sleight of hand or strength. I will make so another sleight of hand. Athletics check. or sleight of hand. Oh, yeah, no sleight of hand for sure. Okay. <laughs> 14? 14 is the meat. Yes. Uh, the DC was 17 to pick because you were trying to do stuff, but just to remove it without destroying the lock was a 14. Uh, it takes some wiggling, some finessing. Cruz really jammed it on in there, uh, but you're able to dislodge it while keeping the, uh, the locking mechanism in place. All right. I'm going to enter the room and then lock the door behind me. Okay. You enter the room. I want to play this. I want to play the song again and make the, the strands of light up here again. Umval. You have arrived at the post office, finally. Uh, doors are open for you to come in. Uh, in entering, there's a elderly dwarf just kind of sitting there counting his uh, postage collection in this very large kind of 
bound book, just kind of flipping through them. Uh, excuse me, my good dwarf. Oh, yeah, sure. Uh, I have a delivery I would like to have uh, shipped out. Oh, wonderful. Uh, what is it, and where is it going? Uh, it is being delivered to uh, Uncle Val uh, in the southern sidelines. Well, the southern side. Are you sure it's not going to the north? It is, in fact, going to the southern sidelands. That's one of the uh, postal uh, posts. I, f- I forget the name for it. But it's like, hey, that's where the parcels are delivered. Let's check it out. Oh, the sandstone sender. Yeah, no, I know it. I just that's what it is. Don't get a lot of packages going there. We usually get them kind of coming back. But all right, fine. If you have postage, I'll, I'll shut you up. Let's see, to the sandlands. Midway. Uh, how fast do you want this delivered? Uh, how fast can you deliver it? Uh, we can have it there within two days. Two days. You are very swift. Yes, sir. Yes. No, it's... That getting there is not the problem. It's the paying after. Uh, that will come out to about six credits. Six credits. Absolutely no problem. Please. Wonderful. Perfect, and he kind of you exchange credits. And what parcel do you hand him in this? Uh, I send him my effectively a rosary of religious symbols. Okay, he takes it. Uh, I, may I wrap this up a little bit more? Oh, uh, please do. I did not have time when I was putting it together. Oh, uh, wonderful! You seem very swiftly kind of pull out all these like multicolored gift wraps and and kind of roll it up. And it's interesting. He kind of gets into it as he does and just kind of adds more ribbon and, and a bow at the end. And he just kind of kind of decks it out a little bit more than you'd expect. All right. Uh, I should do it. Uh, I'll have this sent out immediately. Thank you. Should hear back within about four days. I understand. Okay. Just making sure. Some customers don't understand. They say two-day shipping and they're like, well, why did it take four days for a response? And I, you know, it's a whole thing and a half, Oh, I, I understand. As a runner myself, uh, timing is of the essence. Anyways, I must be going. Have a wonderful day or night, whatever it might be right now. Oh, it's about two in the afternoon. I can never. But all right, I, bye. I can never tell here. Have a good day. Okay, bye. Are your D and D games feeling stale, plain, or downright boring? Upgrade them today with beautiful landscapes, terrifying dungeons, wholesome inns, and vast forests. Draw your players into your own personal fantasy world with Arkenforge. Arkenforge.com provides hundreds of preloaded items for you to mix and match to fully customize your worlds. Use promo code CRITNIT to get $5 off your purchase today. That's CRITNIT. C-R-I-T-N-I-T. Everybody. This is Lola, also known as the Gamer Mom Bomb. I'll be joining you guys in a few episodes as Alanya, the Elven Druid. I'm super excited to join this team. Make sure you enjoy the show, and I'll see you guys soon. Hey, everybody. This is Chris Cornish, your audio mancer for Critting It. I just want to take a little time out to ask you to do a couple of things for us. Find us on Twitter and follow us if you haven't already. We are at crit underscore n underscore it. Also, If you could please leave us a rating and review on iTunes or Google Podcasts or wherever else that you find us, it would help other people find us and get the story out to others. And speaking of the story, let's hop back into it. Cruz, you have now bumbled and fumbled and ran your way all the way through the rest of the the streets of uh, Hopal and you have come come upon your shop. Everything closed. Sign is still turned. Uh, looks as you left it. I'm going to scope around to see if anybody's like watching me go up to the door or not. I'm basically going to go up to the door and turn around and look to see if there's anybody watching my shop. Uh, yeah, roll a perception check. Oh, that's 19. <laughs> uh, at the moment, you don't look like anyone's uh, paying any particular attention to you. Okay, and then uh, I'm going to unlock the door and I'm going to go inside locking the door behind me. Okay. Uh, you're immediately stabbed in the back. No. Uh, yeah, it's it's completely <laughs> empty. 
Uh, no one's there, and it looks like just how you left it. <clears throat> I'm gonna rummage through. I'm gonna grab more supplies that I needed. I'm gonna look for. I'm gonna go run to my safe, and uh, I'm grabbing a spare bag before I do that. And I'm gonna empty out my safe into my bag, credits, everything. Okay. Um, while I'm there, I'm going to throw my sword into the wall to have it polished up one more time because I don't think I'm going to come back. Okay. In the safe is going to hold my deed to the shop. I'm going to take that with me as well. Okay. And in my safe is a stack of my own journals that I kept throughout my entire army career, um, mm-hmm. my childhood, everything. <laughs> All right. I'm going to bring those as well with me. And then I'm going to go back to my front door, unlock it, and lock it behind me and head back to the guild hall. Okay. Uh, you gather your belongings, the very sentimental things that are very special to you, and it is very bittersweet knowing that you possess the things that are most important to you, but as you lock that door... You honestly don't know how long it's going to be till you come back to your precious shop. Um, one of the things I definitely want to make sure that I grabbed was um, a golden medal of the royal seal that the, mm-hmm. Sil- uh, mm-hmm. the emperor gave to me. To it's basically the if I hold this, I'm here to see the emperor. I'm here to see the seal. emperor seal. Yeah, yeah. and uh, I'm gonna after locking my door and uh, there's one thing I'm definitely going to add to the sign and it's going to say closed until further notice okay and I'm going to head back to the guild hall Parker you have begun playing you are stringing together the music and you see one string then another then another, then the other. And as you see them, one, two, three, four, pop off of your strings. You see one, two, three, this time wiggling through the air down to a stack of parchment. You see the first one kind of enter and begin to kind of wrap around the spine, or what would be the spine of this kind of conglomeration. You see it kind of begin to slide forward and kind of move to the center of the room where the other three kind of begin to make their way towards it as well. One of them binds the other side, kind of making it a double-bound book. And then the fourth, and the, or the third and the fourth, finally bind the last two, kind of sealing this, this big mess of pages into one kind of clean stack. And then you begin to see the pages begin to rise. You see the letters and symbols suddenly begin to kind of morph across the surface of the paper, kind of going up and down and through it. And you begin to see the paper kind of origami and begin to fold. And you see it rise to about five feet. You see the top one suddenly begin to change color into like this this gray kind of uh, almost like construction paper. You see dark areas, and you suddenly see lines, kind of golden in nature, begin to kind of form through it. And you see a dot suddenly glow on it. Down again on the second one, you see this kind of reddish area. You see the paper kind of kind of split and morph into this kind of grayish, uh, almost like a, a shredded paper as it goes. And you can see, again, similar, a glowing line, deed to a glowing dot across the paper. You see this reoccurred for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 19 layers. Each one of them portraying a different kind of physique to it, a different kind of twist, color, texture, but each one of them having a specific line and a dot. And at the end, at the very bottom of this, you see what would be the 20th level. You see a small figure. 
tiny in comparison to this entire stack, this entire assortment and array of this entire display, I should say. And there at the very bottom, you see a cloaked figure, silvered skeleton, holding in its hands, very small, but you can see it. What looks to be almost like a canister fills up almost like its chest. And it's slowly turning, emanating a white light as it does. You can track through each layer of this all the way to the top. These winding lines that lead to dots through it. Almost like a pathway. And then you just see the top one. And it begin to once again unravel and kind of fold itself back down. All of the letters kind of splash across it one more time, mixing themselves up once more. And the papers kind of come to rest. Just so I'm interpreting this correctly, did it just show me a map? It seemed like it literally just showed you a map of the fracture. <laughs> what? <Okay. laughs> I just want to say, for having sensitive ears, Gaskar must be out. He's sleeping through a lot of music. He didn't say he played it loud. Oh, uh, by the way, you hear a door open. Good luck concealing this. Who all gonna be ticked? <laughs> I hear a door open. Is it the door? <laughs> yes, you hear a door open. No, it's the door on the other side. The big guild door. I'm going to I'm going I'm gonna open the door. <laughs> okay. Uh Humval, <laughs> as you come busting through one door. Parker casually opens the door to your room and just kind of steps out and you two lock eyes. Umval, I know you're going to be upset. But... I drop my backpack. But I've discovered something. Come, come here. I draw out the bronze man's sword. Come, come here. I pull out the magic tech drive. No, no, come here. Show. I will show you. I've discovered a map to the fracture, I believe. If you try anything funny with your special violin. It did, and the lights. The world is going to be what the world is going to have. One less Parker. Do you understand me? The lights showed me a map. Outlining the levels of the fracture. I'm going to guide you at sword point back into the room. Go get to play. All right, I'll, I'll step back into the room. Get playing. I remember the tune. You play anything other than that tune, I will run you through right here now. All right. And I start playing. Well, as frustrating and as irritating and as much as you want to honestly run Parker through at this moment. I might do it anyways. <gasps> he is playing the tune that you requested and that you demanded. And similar to as Parker saw... These strings of light do, in fact, drop off the violin. They seek out your pile of papers, which is now very obviously in the center of the room. And as they rebind it, shuffling all of the symbols and letters together, and once again rise into their display, you cannot help but note that it does look like Parker was telling the truth and that he was right. This truly seems like a map through the fracture leading all the way down to what can only be interpreted as the silver shade. Well, I guess in this case, you have found something interesting, Parker. I do apologize for breaking and entering, but I let the, my curiosity get the best of me. Um, at that point, I will I will take the, the spare key that I took from my name is and give it to him. No worries, all is, and I punch you in the face. <laughs> <laughs> my, my delicate boy-like face. 
<laughs> it's so punchable. Uh, Parker, does a 15 hit you? Yes. Okay, uh, that's four points of bludgeoning damage as I just clock you one. It hurts. Ow. Does he slam into the wall and wake up Yaskar? That is understandable. Wait, yeah, which room? Which room? One of his horns goes compared to Humbal's. Like, it, like, what number is he? He's six. I believe six. since yeah, he was six. Yeah, you're six. I believe Humbal was seven, or was it? What did you pick? Did you write it down in your notes? I'm pretty sure I was seven. Seven. <laughs> so as you punch Parker, Parker's horn goes through the uh, through the wall and stops about a quarter of an inch short of Gaskar's head. <laughs> And it's just just right there, and then you just wrench it free, and Gaskar. I stays imagine asleep. like I roll roll over, and I roll towards the horn as the horn is retracting from the wall, <laughs> <laughs> right out. <laughs> totally normal. It's all fine. Just goes back to snoring. It's <laughs> what you get with these free rooms, man. Absolutely great rooms. Paper thin walls. <laughs> <laughs> One board thick. Uh, all right. Well. Uh, what, what do you do now? Well, considering we have most certainly uh, failed our commission, perhaps this information will be beneficial towards our reputation. And while I am curious, though, where did these papers come from? I received them from an old man in a caravan on my way here. And considering my, liter- my literature at the time was limited, I have been doodling and making scribbles of whatever is inside. I cannot read it. I literally reach, I, I literally go back outside, grab my backpack, come back in and hand, and pull out all of my hand-done scribbles that are obviously in my handwriting, and they look awful in comparison to the, to the notes that are here. Mm-hmm. But there is a similarity. I'm bald. The symbols of the flaws of the fracture. My first name is Hom. My last name is Val. You do not need to call me Humbal at every available opportunity. Fuck a prax. <laughs> you understand how annoying it gets after a short while? I suppose. Fuck I suppose. Prax. Okay, fine. Me. I hear you. <laughs> it is good you understand me. Fuck a prax. All right, Humvee. What? Do you think the correlation of these levels of the fracture are... Uh, Tied to the gods. Potentially. I know very little of the arcane and only hearsay of the divine. So whatever is left or in between is beyond my knowledge. I might know someone. This is good, Baka Prax. I just don't know if I want them involved. Well, as long as it is not Cruz with his vast knowledge of metalworking attempting to solve arcane literature... I think we should be fine. Cruz sneezes. Oh, somebody's talking about me. All those mutant allergies. Um, I might need to have a word with my mother. Mm, that is unfortunate. I will have to tattle on you of all of your wrongdoings. I apologize. No, don't you dare. Oh, but I dare. And there's nothing you can do to stop me. You could not tell him who your mother is. <laughs> Essentially. It is probably Mrs. Prax. <laughs> Don't worry. I will send a slow... I, I, will, I, will, I will go to the postal office and send, a, and send a slow letter. And then I will follow the courier until I find her. Checkmate, Faka Prax. All right, but... The scout knows how to find people. Look at please, that. Please don't, though. I never thought of that before you broke into his room. If there's anything I'm scared of more than in this world is my mother. Please, put your mind at rest, Prax. I am most certainly going to sell you out as soon as possible. <laughs> yeah, I figured. It, there's a gleam in Humbal's eyes. He's saying this and his shoulders are relaxed. He is telling lie after lie at this point. Yes, but unfortunately it's my mother and I believe every <laughs> word you're saying. It was not a threat. It was a promise. Which makes it a threat. Yes, I threatened him. Yeah, no, that's totally a threat for sure. In any, in any news, I am tired. Faka. Get the hell out of my room. Just as Parker exits the room, 
Cruz returns seeing a very embarrassed looking um, <laughs> well when, when I do get back the first thing I do is I walk up to my name is and I say hey um can I hire somebody to deliver an anvil to the guild from my shop I'm sorry what well I, ha- I have an anvil back in my shop I- I'm wondering if somebody in the guild would mind bringing it here unless I'm sure the mail service would be more than happy to move such an object as far as they need to to a place that you will need it. Is this sort of a sentimental, uh, some sentimentality to you because uh, we do not have a forge here and a anvil was not a heck of a lot of use without a forge. Is it just something you'll sleep with? sleep on just you know keep with like a teddy bear but for a blacksmith well i was thinking about moving the forge as well to the guild where the fuck are you gonna put a forge <laughs> where though you you have a fireplace a table couch I mean, and kitchen where are I you going to put a forge? To the fireplace so it goes out the chimney i just need somewhere to work don't you own a shop? Not for much longer. Well, you should have paid your rent. It's paid off, my name is. I just... I don't think I can go back there, so I'm probably going to sell it. Well, then take the money, buy a new blacksmithing shop, and open your forge there. You can bring your precious anvil, too. Can I just re... you know, build the guild hall? No! You cannot <laughs> rebuild your forge in the guild hall lobby! Why not? <laughs> Tell you what, if you can get the consensus of the group, I'll still say no, <laughs> but at least you'll know yourself that the other ones wouldn't have allowed it anyway. <clears throat> what if I give you money? I like money. <laughs> I'll probably be happy and spend it. Can I get a yes then? I, I, sure. And she hands, she puts out her hand. No, not until you tell me I can have a forge here. Oh, having a forge? No. <laughs> you asked for a yes. I would have just told you yes. A yes for is money? for the That's forge. the easiest way of making money. Oh, no. That's ridiculous. Okay, I see you're being unreasonable. Bruce, you are talking <laughs> to my name is the secretary of the guild of no one, god of tricks and lies. So you're lying to me and I can have a forge. Sweet. Thanks, bye. And I'm going to head back into the guild. I hope that was once again a lie. <laughs> cool. Uh, okay, so you enter back in. Hi, welcome welcome to, to this prestigious golf course. Also, we installed a, a mud pit and some ATVs for the regular folk. Yep. <laughs> Sweet. Uh, so you enter back in right as Prax. You are entering now from your long conversation. Oh, the tension in here is just so thick you can cut it with a knife. Yes. What happened? I think I might die soon. (laughs) Well, we do go into the fracture a lot. But can you elaborate? I have to go see my mother. (laughs) And Humval is threatening to tell her things. Incriminating things. Did you get caught? (laughs) Mm. Maybe. Parker, did you get caught? Well, he's sporting a fresh black eye, so you tell me. Mm. Oh, it, it's already a black eye now? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. With the force that he clocked him with. Oh, yeah. It's obvious. Oh, okay. Um, I'd like to imagine that the piece of wire is still, like, right there on the ground in front of his door. Yeah, that's about right, yeah. Okay. Um, I'm going to go pour through all my journals as a kid and see if I wrote down anything in here um, to hint at anything to do with mist and sweat. Um, I would not leave before Relic gets back because I would like you all here to help explain why we failed the mission. That's fine. I'll need time for my eye to heal. There, I am pretty sure there's frozen peas in the fridge or something along those lines. 
Ooh, peas. I like those. I'll put them on your eye. It will reduce the swelling. And after thawing them with your bruised eye face, then, you know, you can eat them. True. That is the point. Win-win. Yes, put the put the frozen peas on your bruised eye face, tiny goat man. I'm gonna. <laughs> okay. Parker, you are properly sedated with frozen peas. Uh... Whom ball are you sleeping? I am also sleeping after I bar my freaking door. Okay, you bar your door successfully. Uh, Parker, you can almost swear you hear nails going into the wall in <laughs> Home Ball's room. Are you uh, are you patching up the hole into my wall? I'm giving that hole an eyeball first, see what I can see inside your room, see if you're being crazy in there or not. He's passed out. You look passed right out. into Mongoose butthole. Yep. Right. <laughs> I fart. <laughs> and that's how pink eye starts, kids. <laughs> I put water skin up to the wall and I squeeze it through the hole. Uh, Just a jet of water. <laughs> um, all right. Um, well, I rolled a five for whatever it's worth, DM. <laughs> Hey, that's a constitution saving throw. And the lower you roll, the more likely you are to wake up. So yes, you are soaked with water suddenly as your wall is spitting at you <laughs> and suddenly you wake up. Why Why is my wall spitting at Valia? Is that you? Yes. Go to sleep. <laughs> okay. And I wipe my but on <laughs> the towel and curl back up and attempt to fall back asleep. Okay. Attempt. You pass back out. Okay. Yeah, you, you pass back out. It's not that hard. It's like one of those you kind of wake up halfway, but ah, time to go back to sleep. All right. Uh, Humbol, you're asleep. Gaskar, you're asleep. Parker, you're nursing your face. Uh, and Cruz, you just came back and... Do you go to sleep as well? No, I'm. I go back to my room. I put my sword up against the wall. I and uh, I start going through all of my journals. Okay. And Got I start it. with the like very first one where it's like little kid handwriting, and it's like today mm-hmm. my daddy taught me how to forge nails. Hmm. Um, okay. And but I'm I'm pouring through them to see if I find anything whatsoever mist and sweat um or fracture building a hit a city down there plans anything i could have overheard that i thought i should have written down roll a history check that's a 17 16 plus one you don't find anything it was it was too early in the in the days it seems as though most of this planning and most of the the events of it took place after you went into the army I mean, I have all those journals, Uh, too. Like, I have my lifelong journals in here. Yes, you're just not around your family in the army to have picked up on bits and pieces of it. Uh, All right, well, you eventually sift through, fall asleep to eat the beautiful books upon you. I fall asleep as well. Yeah, you fall asleep with pee on your face. (laughs) And... (laughs) And... You all gain a long rest. You all fall asleep. You all have a wonderful night's rest. It all goes fairly well. Gaskar, in your sleep, roll a d20, please. An 11? As you fall asleep, you see in your your dream... In kind of a, a gray dreamscape. Everything is very fuzzy, very fuzzy. You can tell that something around you is is moving. You feel the ground beneath you kind of suddenly jerk and shift one way and suddenly shift in another one. You can hear just the vague sounds of cracking around you. And suddenly you feel your legs suddenly begin to split. And you have to pick one side or the other in order to kind of stand on whatever beneath you is crumbling. But even then, it too falls into rubble. 
and you begin to fall and fall and fall. Cruz and Humval, you suffer similar dreams in the night. Having just the world around you begin to physically crumble. Parker. You would have this dream. And you get about halfway through it. When you feel something on your nose. You feel it again. And then something like on your forehead. I wake up. Ah, you're awake. Wonderful. Uh, I need your help. And that's where we're going to end tonight's episode.